The expressed views of the guests on this podcast are theirs alone and not necessarily endorsed by the host, TWBC, or any associated sponsor. Conversations that are robust yet balanced, on point and to the point. You are listening to The Talk of Tournament Water Skiing. This is the TWBC Podcast. And now, here's your host, Tony Lightfoot. Well, greetings one and all, and welcome to the TWBC Podcast. My name is Tony Lightfoot, and glad to have the support uh, once again. So, uh, we're at the Malibu Open, uh, Lyman Land, uh, just outside Tuscaloosa, and uh, a skier that seems to be making uh, making some waves in uh, in recent times. Uh, he medaled in the Europe and Africa Water Ski Championships over in the San Gervasio, uh, with, with a jump that was very, very close to his personal best. Scored a new PB at the Mastercraft Pro uh, just as recently as last week and is looking to, to try and uh, conjure up some magic out there on the water uh, this time around in, in Alabama. His name is uh, Luca Rockenvaldi. comes to us from Austria. How are you doing, sir? I'm good, Tony. How are you? Not too bad, not too bad. Uh, Luca, you're no stranger to these kind of waters on, the, uh, on this side of the Atlantic because you were a collegiate it's gear for uh, for quite a while with the raging cages isn't that right yeah i've studied at uh, the university of louisiana at lafayette for five semesters basically went there to improve my skiing study a little bit and yeah that's about it now back at home and continuing my studies excellent stuff so you're in you're in uh, graduate studies right now what you what, what are you doing there well i moved back home to my hometown vienna and studying medicine right now um trying to keep skiing as long as possible and yeah it's not that easy right now but uh, i'm trying okay and uh, uh it, well it doesn't it it doesn't seem easy from your point of view but i mean it, it i mean the jumps that you've been producing out there in recent times you know uh probably say a lot to the contrary you know i mean i mean as i just mentioned you you jumped a new personal best last week. It would, I think it was like about a two, what was it about a two sixteen or something like that. Two eighteen, sixty six point four meters. Yeah. All right, and uh, no doubt looking to push that one a little bit, little bit harder. You know, so I mean, you, you've been you, you've been a pretty decent jumper over the last last few seasons. I mean, you've been jumping consistently over sixty meters. What happened this year? Um, honestly, I don't know. I just um, put the work in, like, especially off the water, went to the gym, stayed consistent in the gym over the winter, and then I um, started my season this, this Easter here in Florida um, with Matt Rini. Tried to improve as much as possible there and just really didn't really focus on jumping itself. Just tried to do a lot of open water cuts, like get the ramp out of the way, improve my cutting, improve my position, and I think that really helped recently just ride the skis and learn how to ride them better huh exactly like when you when you're at that point jumping like my air form is not the problem like my air form is good getting off the ramp is good my kick's good it's just getting that little bit more speed out of the turn and carrying it through the ramp basically and just learning how to transition more efficiently from that position through the jump and into the air exactly that that's all about it right now all right then tell us a little bit of how you got started in this because i mean uh, you come for essentially from a water skiing family i mean you go all the way back and i mean i know i know some uh, some folks that uh, uh, that are kind of getting on a bit in age you know but uh, but i mean they were quite prominent in the sport of a uh, tournament water skiing but uh, tell us about the rock and Vol family and how they got, uh, how they got into it and how uh, consequently you got into it yeah, basically, it, it, I think it all it goes back to my, my, my grandparents, like from my dad's side, um, his father skied and then my dad got into skiing with all his brothers, they were um, three brothers and kind of started um, the water ski club at home and yeah, they just loved skiing and then my dad was mostly a slammer but a pretty de- decent jumper too and then... Um, Oh, that sounded long. Yeah. <laughs> and then from him on, like, my siblings started skiing. Like, my, my sister Tina, she was a really good jumper back in the days. And my brother skied with me. My, my cousins skied. So it was basically our parents put on our skis since we were, like, three, four years old. Okay. So, uh, so, when, so when did you kind of make that self-discovery that, like, saying, okay... 
all right, all right. I'm, I'm a pretty decent skier I can I can actually start to uh, to progress a little and uh, and, and get up in the rankings uh, how d when when did that occur well like as I said I probably started skiing like first time on the skis like three four, four years old and then did it now and then and when I was about eight nine I started skiing at the ski club like every morning in the summer and then build up there and then I got better and better and when I was like 12 13 I joined the Austrian national team the the youth team and then when I was probably like 13 14 like been jumping for about two years and I think I got like six or something at the junior Europeans and then I kind of was like okay we can maybe do something with that and then kept pushing there and then when I was 17 I won my first medal at the Europeans and I was like okay like I finally game on game on I finally I'm in there with the top guys in Europe and then as you said like when I was 18 I uh, 19 actually I came to the US to study in Lafayette and just was like okay I'm, I'm all in and pushing med school out as long as possible and try to ski and improve and now we're here um, with the top athletes in the world and placed fourth last weekend and super stoked about that okay so uh, so how, how did that approach uh, go with the university of louisiana lafayette did they reach out to you or did you reach out to them uh, no, knowing knowing how uh, renowned that program is well it was it was pretty easy because my cousin carla was already studying here uh, for two years and he kind of he's um, your cousin yeah he's my cousin oh, and okay. he kind of I, I, I see i started see. recruiting me pretty early on like and i was like i got offers from other school but i was pretty solid that i will go to lafayette and, and all my buddies i kind of grew up in europe skiing like went there so that was a group big group joining with me and i was like okay it's this could be fun and it's a lot of good skiers and we all improved a lot together so who was on the team with you around about that time um, uh, aside from carlo i guess well it was a bunch of people like um jamie ball eduardo um conley pinet luke outram aaron davis like the list goes on and on we were like about 23 people while i was there like we were a huge team yeah, and I mean a lot of the, a lot of those names will be skiing in the World Championships. So exactly, you, 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 like all of those names are pretty well known right now. They're all on the Pro Tour. They're all skiing a lot, and some of them are still studying and still in the US. And yeah, it's like it's amazing having those those folks around me, those buddies, and going with them to those pro pro tournaments is like the best thing ever because you you skiing with the pros, but on the other side, with you were for your best friends. All right, tell us a little bit about how you prepare for uh, for for a jump set. I mean, uh, I mean, I think I think you slalom and you trick, don't you? I mean, I you do, do all overall. three, but like especially here right now on the pro tour, I'm just jumping. Uh -huh. By by far my best event. I I did um, the World Water Ski Pro Tour in the summer. Did the Austrian um, Tour Stop. The Sound Sea. Yeah, and no, like. Right here, like before a jump set, normally I have my, my special routine. I basically have my own Spotify playlist, hear the same songs all the time that get me going. Oh, oh I've got to ask you, what is on there? Well, it's a bunch of... Um, not like hard, not no, like it's, hard, it's hard metal, like Ramstein or anything no, like no, that? No, it's nothing like that. It's mostly a little bit of rap, like um, Eminem, you Lose Yourself, like songs like that. that oh, keep yes, you, from 7th Mile. Yeah, it's so 8 Mile, 8 Mile, eight, actually. 8 Miles, I'm um, sorry. Yeah, and that's like that's a really good song to get me going. Like It's normally the last song before I go out of the water, and hypes me up a little bit and gets me going. Like I'm, I'm ready to go, basically. Anything else on that Spotify list? Um, uh, another one, um, song probably is really good is Win so like gets me like on that level where I was like okay, I'm, I'm aiming all for all I the, do is win all I do is win aiming for the top spot nothing else um, yeah it's just I had that playlist for I think like six years now and it's, it's just that routine like you do the same movements the same warm up routine with the same songs and you're you're dialed in basically Okay, yeah, I can, I'm, I'm just I'm just trying to like play those in my head right now, and I can <laughs> and I can definitely understand how yeah. how how, how, that, how they would they would work for jump. I mean, mine's a little more sedate, you know. Whenever I get into announcing or anything like that, anyway, my Genesis or what have you. But uh, but beyond 
getting prepared for it with with the headphones and stuff like that now obviously the preparation starts long before that and it's being selective with who you power with and who you ski with you know and i know i noticed that in the in the last few weeks or uh, or even or even longer leading up to those tournaments i mean you've been uh, uh you, you've been traveling with uh, with joel poland right yeah, I came to the S like um, one and a half weeks ago. I'm, I'm staying with Joel and Cole at their house. I'm training at Matt Rini's right now. Uh, I'm getting ready for especially these pro tournaments and then looking ahead to the World Championships in October. And probably going to move over to Franzi's place, my my Franzi Oberleitner, my national coach, when he gets to the S. And yeah, um, it's it's fun traveling with Joel. Like you have one of the best athletes in the world and one of my best buddies. And we try, especially in jump, try to push each other. Like right now I'm, I'm releasing him in tricks. And like it's that, that buddy you just need. Like you travel around, it's not too boring. It's always fun. And you always have somebody to help you out basically. What is it with Austrians and jumping? I mean, you, I mean, you, you, you mentioned Franz Oberleitner. I mean, he was like famous and winning European titles way back in the 1970s. I mean, the guy, the guy has got like, like the like the elixir that allows him not to age at all. Yeah, I mean, Franz is is one of the all time greats, especially in Austria. Like he's he's a living legend. He's been in the sport for so so many years, and been the national coach for so many years too and he's all about jumping like he's a really good coach in general but when you ask something about jump he always has that little little extra the icing on the top you could say that that helps you and been skiing with Franzi for a while and this Mikey too and those two coaches really got me where I am today and then of course, I had the the U.S. coaches like Matt and Corey Picos or Jay Bennett, like they helped me too. But like Franzi and Mikey were were those coaches that coached me since I was like ten years old. All right, all right, and uh, that yeah, I mean that I mean the influence of Franzi, I mean is like what is like well renowned within within Austria and uh, and beyond. So, I mean we're we're approaching the tail end of the season. We're at the uh, the penultimate uh, stop of the uh, the water ski pro tour. I mean it's essentially the last stop of the water ski pro tour. But then the world comes along. It, it is the big daddy. So I mean you're obviously trying to wire that up, but you but a lot of people try to you know try to temper their emotions and te- and you know to make sure that you know just before the event nothing untoward happens you know so i mean how 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 do you how do you prepare with that in mind well of course it's the world championships it's the biggest event of the year um didn't didn't go too well for me 2 years ago um, mostly because I was I was preparing for the collegiate nationals, didn't jump a lot on six foot, but this year it's a whole different thing. I'm I'm up there with the best in the world, and it puts a little bit more pressure on me to like get a good placement out of it. But I'm I'm just gonna do my the same thing as always. I'm gonna ski with Franzi. Um, I'm gonna do all, overall at the world championships, so jump trick and slalom. But of course the focus is on jump, but. I'm not going into the tournament like I have to like get a medal out of it, but oh, of course I want to place up there. But in general, I'm just trying to do my thing, not focus too much on the other people. Like maybe get another PB out of it. Jax is an amazing side. Like you see all those people jump PBs there, big jumps, and I'm I'm just gonna try to do the same thing. And we'll see what the placement is in the end, but mostly focus on myself. And, you know, I mean, a lot of people are listening to this and uh, probably rather new to tournament water skiing, but, I mean, the two major ramp heights are 1.65 metres high, which is 5.5 feet, and and, and 1.8 metres high, which is 6 feet. You know, the, I mean, there's... I mean... I mean, when people ask what's the difference between the two, they very succinctly say, well, it's six inches or 15 centimeters, you know, uh, bet- bet- between the two, at 30, 35 centimeters. But there is 
a remarkable difference in technique and your approach to uh, to jump in six foot compared to 1.65 meters high because if you're not careful it'll swallow you and spit you out exactly uh, the six six foot ramp is is the maximum and it's it's a big difference from from the five and the 5.6 ramp um it doesn't sound a lot, as as you said, but but going over the ramp is is on those two different heights is a huge difference, and you gotta adjust. Like on the five five point six ramp, you can you can really dig in there and just throw yourself basically over it. On the six foot ramp, it, if you do the same thing, it just stops you and catches you basically. So you gotta you gotta really go in there with the right position and don't overdo it basically. All right, then. Uh, we talked a little bit about goals with the World Championships. What about a tournament like this, uh, the, the the Malibu Open? I mean, you've skied here uh, one or two times. You've taken a couple of practice rounds. How was your practice round, uh, really? Um, it was quite interesting. I um, haven't been, been here, really. Um, the wind was kind of weird, but a little bit swirly. I thought it's a tailwind, but it kind of was a headwind in the glide, so my timing was a bit off. But, like, a practice set like this, you'd basically just want to get your timing which i gladly got in the end and feel the ramp a little bit because all the ramps are a bit different and i did that like the jump the jumps weren't huge but i got the feeling for the leg for the ramp and that's that's all you need in a practice set like this before a tournament basically indeed i mean you you you, you said the wind swelled around and so and it, and it did so at the mastercraft pro and the ramp was moved around once and then back back at the original position then back to the opposite position and then finally rested as someone who is around that dock side waiting to jump what was going through your mind um yeah it was tough like i was i was second off the dog eagle was first it was really really tough for him because he was all suited up and then it took another three hours basically until he went out on the water um, it's tough for four a ski- hours and fifteen actually. Yeah, it's 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 crazy and it's tough for skiers. Like we get ready. Like as as I mentioned earlier, I, had, I have my routine, and then you basically get stopped in the middle of your routine, and then have, start all over again two hours later, and then another two hours later, which is which is not good, especially in jump because it's such a how long your Spotify playlist? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that too. But jump is such a challenging event, and so many things can go wrong. And it's, if you like have to wait like thirty minutes, an hour to go out there, and you've been just sitting around, you like you cool down, you you lose that adrenaline, and like it's a whole different story. Sorry, when you're out there again. So it wasn't easy. I I gladly did really good. Um, the prelims were a little bit crazy too because we had some boat issues, but. Um, I managed to to end up in the fourth spot in the final, which I'm really glad about. And as you said, coming into this event, um, the expectations are a lot higher now than they used to be, I would say. I definitely want to repeat that again. And it's going to be a lot more challenging this weekend because we're 16 jumpers that all can go above the 200, 210 feet. It's a pretty deep field this year. Yeah, it's a pretty deep field. And we're we're all up there together and all of us can go... uh, those those 210 which are the benchmark i would say to go go in the final and it's going to be interesting all right then so distance wise uh, what do you reckon reckon it's going to take to make it through to the final out of those 16 jumpers um i'm not sure what the cut is uh, no is it eight or ten jumpers not not too sure but let's just but say let's just say what 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 kind of distance would you believe is needed to be to achieve absolute safety um i would say it's it's around that that 210 like to be absolute safe probably 214 215 215 was was the benchmark last weekend but so about a 65 meter jump yeah about 65 meters i would say um last weekend was just six jumpers in the final i mean the, the field was a little smaller but with 16 guys probably i think it's eight or ten in the final it's definitely going to be like Probably 210, 212, um, to, absol- to be absolutely sure, to 215, like 65 meters. All right, then. So, okay, we're going to leave the podcast around about that, uh, around about this moment here. Uh, any any parting words you'd like to say? Well, as, as I mentioned, everybody that 
got me here where where I am. I'm, I'm I'm really happy to have the support of all my coaches, my team, my family, of course, and all my friends that that helped me along the way, that also coached me, and it's just fun to being around your friends at these tournaments and also being the best one of the best in the world and i'm just enjoying it as much as i can right now um at some point med school is gonna catch me and work is gonna catch me so i'm just trying to to live it right now i would say and probably some of those lessons lessons from med school could get could come quite in handy for for some of some of your competitors well hopefully not but <laughs> maybe we'll see <laughs> All right, then. That, this has been the latest edition of the TWB, TWBC podcast. Uh, thanking you very much uh, for Thank your you, support. Tony. And uh, with that, and until the next time, it is ciao for now. Thank you for listening to the TWBC podcast. Be sure to check out our website at waterskibroadcasting.com. Links to our presence on major social media platforms can be found there, as well as updates to our webcast and this podcast. Duplication or rebroadcasting of this broadcast without written consent of TWBC is prohibited. Subscribe to us on your favorite podcast platform and be sure to join us next time for the next edition of the TWBC Podcast. <laughs>